All right, guys, we're still working on this CL-175. We've got some parts in the mail. Reusing the old pistons, we just put the rings in this one, and I'll show you how to do that on this one. So I like to start with the bottom ring that's going to hold one side of your oiler ring in place. So what I do is I put the oiler ring in first. There's a little groove. It's real hard to see, it's real tiny, but actually the rings on the outside will hold this in place and they go on top and bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and put the oiler ring on. Let's put it there on bottom. Now I've got the bottom ring kind of already mocked up in place. I'm just going to slide it forward and it's going to catch on the groove that's on that ring uh, and then it'll hold it in place. But I want to put my top one in too first. Okay, that's looking good. You just want to be slow and easy with it. You don't want to stretch these rings outside of their tolerance. In the service manual, it shows all the specs for that. If you want to measure your rings. And the gap between. So I got the top ring started. I'm just going to work it around. All the way around. It's going to grab a hold of that groove on the top of the oil ring. All right. That one is in. The top one is in. And then when it's in the cylinder, it's going to compress a little. So then we're going to put in the bottom one. I'm just going to slide that one up. I'm going to offset the gap. I don't think it really matters on the oiler so much as it does on the top two rings. I'm just going to slowly pop that into place too. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Offset that gap between the two. Again, I don't know if that matters on the bottom oiler ring. Okay, so the bottom oiler ring is in. It's going to deliver lubrication. Oil is going to come in here. It's going to make it through their journals. It's going to come out on the cylinder wall. It's going to help lubricate as this thing is pumping along. So, and we'll do the top rings. There's a manufacturer mark. This one says R. Right there. But anyhow, there's a manufacturer's mark and that has to go up. And then there's also two different rings. And you'll see on the outside, they're different. The material on the outside here is different than this one. So the shinier one, that's going to be your top ring. And the dull colored one is going to be your bottom ring. And it does matter which way you position these in the on the piston. So make sure that manufacturer mark is up. So we're going to do the, the second ring.
So now it's stuck on the top ring. Take a piece of my old ring. Okay. All right, the bottom one's in, or the second one, I should say. And then your top ring, again, it's got that finish on there. Manufacturer markup. So service manual says 120 degrees off of the gap on the second ring. So here's gap. The second gap, I'm going to rotate this 180. All right, I bring it back to 90. I'm just going to go somewhere in the middle. I'm not that worried about it. I don't have a protractor. A protractor? Is that the right word? Okay, top one's in. So that's that. It's pretty easy. Putting the rings in, taking the rings out. Uh, that's a different story. A lot of penetrant and heat you can get them to come out. And then if you get any burrs or anything, just take some real fine sandpaper. Make sure you hit those. Ideally, you don't have to. So I'm reusing these pistons, and that's what I'm going to do. Also got my head the cylinders actually I'm sorry and they were honed I was gonna do it myself the tool was 40 bucks it was $44 at my local bike shop to go ahead and get them honed so that's what I did I had them honed they got a great cross hatch in them they're gonna be good for these new rings got all new gaskets and everything I got to take this one off in the mail today so that's why we're working in the shop today so I'm going to start putting this thing back together slowly but surely, but that's how you do your rings. Stay tuned.